let everything go for just a second here and bring everybody on into the stream. Looking at Wednesday, Tom. Wednesday, yep. March 13th, 2024. Here we are, the first official day of the 2024 NFL League year. And Wednesday night, it's MHI. He is Tom Hall. Yep. I'm Luke <laughs> Patterson. What's going on, Tom? Oh, uh, you know, just trying to uh, trying to get everything packed and ready to move. It's a pain. It's just a pain. Like packing boxes and carrying them out, carrying out furniture. You know, it's uh, it's never fun to move. <laughs> it's never fun to move, and we're going to be talking about moving. The Broncos have moved on from several fan favorites. Want to know how you react to that? What's it look like when you have a Justin Simmons? sitting around on the free agent market. What's it look yeah. like when Josie Jewell is signing with an NFC team reunited with a former defensive coach? We're going to react to all of that and more, including Russell Wilson to the Steelers, quarterback draft prospects, and big news of the day. We had two offensive player starters, projected starters for 2024, re-signed today. But before we do that, let's say what's up to everybody in the stream. Our very own DVA is coming in here saying, what's up, Broncos country? Make sure you hit that like button on the way in. Please share on all platforms and subscribe if you have not done so already. Uh, we also have C. Chang coming in here. Hey, what's up? No free agent signings today? Technically not. Not yet. The day's not over. Now, here's the big thing, Tom. Legal tampering. I know, I know, I know. It's just kind of like a little thing I got to throw out there because deals got done really at the combine when you think about it almost a month yep. ago. Uh, they become official today at 2 p.m. Mountain. That includes, of course, free agents signing their contracts. That includes trades, which include Jerry Judy to the Cleveland Browns. You can read yeah. all about that at milehighhuddle.com. Again, the Denver Broncos traded wide receiver Jerry Judy to the Cleveland Browns for a fifth and a sixth round pick, dumping $13 million of his salary right on out the door. Lots to react to, Tom. What's your uh, initial reaction? Jerry Judy. Yeah. I'm, well, first of all, I'm glad they're not spending a lot of money right now because even though they've made moves to get a bunch of cap, they really should roll it over into next year as much as they can because this year is going to be a, a bit of a rougher year, I think. So find what you can in the draft, roll that over, and then go, you know, go for it next year. That's that's my uh, that's my feeling on the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, Jerry Judy being gone, you know, later we've been, we've been talking about it for a while. You know, we've been we've been talking about it seems like every the last two years for the trade deadline and everything. Oh, Jerry Judy's gone. Jerry Judy's going to get traded, but he stuck around and now it's finally happened. I'm a little disappointed in what they got for him, but, you know, they got what they could. Well, they got what they could, but I'm also frustrated, right? The same guy that likes Sean Payton. I just had to have him here and I'm willing to stay in the foxhole with Sean Payton until a point. There's going to be a point of no return. I hope we never reach that, but I'm realistic. Sean, why didn't you trade him when he was more valuable? I don't right. know. Before Halloween, when the trade deadline came and went, I mean, Lil Jordan Humphrey was re-signed today, Tom, in a move that I absolutely love. I texted you about it. You're like, gee, I wonder what he got paid. Not a huge lucrative. It's just a one-year deal. It's kind of something we were both speculating. I'm happy to have a Lil Jordan Humphrey back. He scored three touchdowns, just one more than a Jerry Judy. He wasn't a first-rounder. <laughs> Uh, he's a good team player. Say what you want him about him being a New Orleans Saint, a Sean Payton guy. Look, you get a lot more out of a little Jordan Humphrey. You get a lot more out of an Adam Troutman than you did a Jerry Judy. And I'm not ne necessarily hyping these two guys up. I'm proving a point about Jerry Judy. You should have been able to move him when he was in higher demand last yeah. fall. I ultimately fault Sean Payton for that, and it's a little disappointing. Well, I also think they could have waited until the draft. If if people, uh, you know, if teams started to see draft uh, wide receivers coming in the draft, they may have been able to get something. And I, I don't know about the timing. Maybe the timing is they had to do it before the new league started or whatever. To, but um, yeah, you would you would think if people if teams got desperate, they would offer more. You know, so I don't know why they did it now and why they took so little. But I mean, he just he, for his pedigree, he did not live up to his potential no way. bust that's a nice way of saying jerry judy was a bust go ahead yeah. i'll say it. i'll say it for you he was a bust and you can see that all of that out there but uh 
David, our guy, was coming in here with a 499 Super way before the show even started, like he always does. David Yonkin, thank you so much. Do you guys think the Broncos will add a veteran quarterback? I say no, but then again, I don't know anything. David, none of us know what's going on over there, Sean Payton. And you've got those guys out there on X, right? And those gals, I suppose. Not so much to that extent, at least here in Denver, where you got guys just saying, I know what's going to happen per source, per source, per source. That usually means they're talking to agents. That's what I've learned in my short career here in the Denver media. And agents, Tom, tend to fib a little bit. They tend yeah. to lie. They tend to do their job and try to promote images. Here's the thing. None of us know what Sean Payton wants to do. I heard rumors at the scouting combine or around the scouting combine, Sam Howell could be a potential target for Sean Payton. Do we want to go trading for Sam Howell? He's not exactly a free agent, but David brings up a good point, Tom. Another quarterback has to be joining this roster. You would think before the Broncos add a rookie in the first round, yeah. when you look at the quarterback options, it's tough out there. You see Jimmy Garoppolo gets released by the Las Vegas Raiders today. I absolutely want nothing to do with the Jimmy G. What say you? No, actually, I mean, I don't really want anything to do with most of the quarterbacks that were rumored. No, you know, you've heard me rant and rave about Sam Darnold. I don't want him around. I didn't Vikings. want him. Thank goodness he went to the Vikings. No Zach Wilson for me. I'm not a big I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo's suspended for a couple of games. So, I mean, that's you, right. You get him right. Yeah. So I'm not interested, but I want, I would be interested in is if they are really targeting a first round quarterback and they are going to go after and get him. I wouldn't be mind them getting a, a veteran who can be his mentor. Somebody who may need, could start if they needed to. And I was thinking like, They've already been scooped up. So I was thinking Jacoby Brissett would have been an okay one. Tyra Taylor would have been a, an okay one. You know, even uh, even Tannehill, maybe. Someone yes, who's been around. Right there. Ryan Tannehill. Speaking of Ryan Tannehill, just real quick, Tom, that would be roughly 4.9 mil if you're looking at it for, for a rough one-year deal yeah. to get a Ryan Tannehill per spot rack, to your point. I mean, that's not a lot when you're looking for that veteran guy. No. And he was terrible last year. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. He He's really kind of on the decline, but he's <laughs> he's somebody who has uh, been talked about as a leader and could help mentor. Someone's been in the league for a while, could help a young rookie quarterback. And if needed to start a few games, could probably do just fine. And that's that's what I would look for. But don't don't take these reclamation projects go don't you know that are terrible. Don't go out and get these old veterans and try and band-aid anything. Go draft your quarterback. And if you want to bring in another veteran, which I don't think Stidham is a, that mentor type that I'm talking about, go get somebody like, you know, like Tannehill, go get him, bring him in cheap, let him sit, you know, let him help that, uh, help that Ricky quarterback. That's, that's what I see. Otherwise, why waste your money? I mean, well, money, even if it's cheap, it's still, if you're get, buying a piece of junk, it's still a piece of junk, no matter how much you pay for it. Well, and I had tweeted this out there on social media earlier this week at Luke Patterson LP. You could get it, Tom, at Thomas Hall NFL, Mothership at Mile High Huddle. Uh, I just said, look, man, when you look at what the deal was for bringing Stidham over, it's not that bad looking at it this year considering the quarterback market is always on the rise and you're seeing some bizarre deals get done for some of these retread slappy quarterbacks. Uh, right before the show kicked off, Joe Flacco going to the Indianapolis Colts. I, I mean, I haven't even seen the deal yet, but um, yeah. what? I It's not going to be I, five mil at least. It's not anything less, I would imagine. Joe's going to get paid. He's making good money. And uh, away we go. Michael Rinkio coming in. Good evening, Luke Thomas on MHI. Go Broncos. We appreciate that, Michael. Thank you for joining us, man. Uh, hopefully you are doing well. Almost St. Patty's Day, Tom. Ready for yeah. that. Ready for St. Patty's here in about four days. It's on a Sunday this year. It's kind of odd. Yeah, I'm, uh, I am like St. Patrick's Day, but again, I'm not going to be able to spend a lot of time celebrating because I'm busy. <laughs> Well, you might have to hydrate a little bit as you move those heavy boxes. Uh, Timmy Shields coming in, a $5 super. Thanks, Timmy. Uh, do you think the real reason that the Broncos traded Jerry Judy is because Bo Nix is number 10? <laughs> yes, Timmy. Oh, I man. love a good conspiracy theory. And Timmy's on to something. Uh, you know what, Timmy? We're not going to see any more cryptic tweets. Are we going to miss that here in Broncos country? We don't have to be on Jerry Judy watch over on social media. However... Timmy, Tom, MHI. 
we're still on Cortland Sutton watch, right? Cortland Sutton, he scrubbed all his Bronco stuff a few weeks back. We're waiting to see what happens with that. Um, yeah. Do you for do you see a circumstance in which Cortland Sutton gets dealt? Because I could see the Broncos hanging on to a guy like Sutton, hanging on to a guy like Garrett Bowles up until the trade, possibly use them as trade capital the day of. Yeah, I mean they could definitely. I I think they're going to probably wait if they if they had a lot of suitors and they could get rid of them now, they probably would have done it already if they if they got good draft capital. But like I said about Jerry Judy, maybe they are going to wait for the draft cuz it's not going to hurt anything to wait a little bit. Someone gets desperate, wants them. But the other thing is you can't get rid of everybody, right? I mean, you can, but you want to keep some of these core players. Sutton was a pretty solid player last year. He wasn't spectacular, but he was good solid. Good season. It would be nice to have somebody like that in the fold for another year. I mean, his they did right now. They're not cap strapped for with him. I mean, they they made other moves. The one move that I think is probably going to uh, that I thought was going to drop right away was DJ Jones, and it looks like he's sticking mm. around. So there are a few moves that are still out there. Bowles, DJ Jones, Sutton are question marks right now. Well, and you got to look at the market too, right? And we're going to talk about the safety market and what's going to happen with Justin Simmons. We're going to get into that. We're going to finish this wide receiver conversation, Tom. There are a couple wide receivers that I'm eyeing for the Denver Broncos. I think would be very cheap, at least as free agents. We'll get into that and more. But look at our guy, CJ, coming in here. What's up, Chad? $20 super to Tom's moving fund. <laughs> And we absolutely appreciate that. I yeah, benefit right. from Tom moving as well. So uh, reap all the all the fruits of Tom's labor, at least <laughs> as he's moving. And yeah, give Tom some thoughts, prayers, and well wishes as he gets ready for a big move just 10 minutes down the road. Right, Tom? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't like to... I like to do stuff myself for the most part. Like I did a bunch of remodeling myself yeah. in my last home. So I'm like, I'm packing... My wife and I are packing everything. I'm carrying it out. You know, I'll get the neighbor once in a while if it's too heavy for me, but uh, it is the it, neighbor. Not even going to give the neighbor a shout out, man. <laughs> that will help the neighbor. It tells me all I need to know about that neighbor. Uh, Miguel Santos Vaughn coming in. What's up, Miguel? What's up, fellas? Do you think Denver will make a play for Armstead? I just want some help on that defensive line. Miguel, I love this comment because obviously Broncos country and Miguel reacted to the news yesterday that defensive tackle Malcolm Roach, former New Orleans Saints, signed a two-year, $7 million deal. Uh, not bad when you look at the actual contract. Well, that's $3.5 million base, roughly $3 million in guarantees. Uh, but it's not enough when you look at supplementing that defensive line that Tom and I have talked about and complained about for what feels like nine months in a row now. Uh, you've got to supplement it. One defensive lineman, a Malcolm Roach, a good defensive run stopper who doesn't produce sacks, isn't going to yield the immediate results Vance Joseph's defensive line needs. Miguel is absolutely on to something. Are, is there a free agent defensive tackle, Tom, like an Armstead that you would be interested in? Or who would you be eyeing? There's even, you know, you look at some older guys like a Fletcher Cox out there. Uh, DJ reader. I, I mean, how much a contract are these guys going to command? Because Miguel's right. We've got to supplement the defensive line. Well, I mean, I wanted him to sign Armstead when he was younger, when he was becoming up on free agent, but they gave him a deal and stuck, kept him around. I mean, for me, I keep talking about getting younger, being able to get younger and let this team grow with a new quarterback. Although I do like Armstead. He's 30 years old, going to be 31 next year. He's, He's not a dynamic pass rusher, interior pass rusher anymore. I mean, he's he's solid. Don't get me wrong. He had five sacks uh, this this season, which is nothing to sneeze at. But if you got to give him a ton of money, then I would say no. But if if he comes at a reasonable cost for what his production is going to be, I would definitely do that. But yeah, some of these older D linemen, you know, they start to fall off as they get a little bit older, especially the bigger ones. So. You know, it's hard to judge how much they have left in the tank for a long, lucrative deal. But for me, it's like you got to get some of these guys in the draft. You got to get a young nucleus building in order to uh, make this team ready for the next three to five years. They've got to be willing to take a jump, but they've got to build from the inside out. That starts on the offensive line and the defensive line. And 
We'll uh, react to some restructuring, if you will, of some deals with Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey, two free agents just a year ago. Here a bit little her here later in the show. Ah, tongue tied. George Fox coming in here. Do we know anything on Garrett yet? Are we talking Gar Garrett Bowles? I'm guessing. Um, I think that's who it is. Cool. We covered that just a second ago, George, and I think we came to the same conclusion, Tom and I, that perhaps the Broncos are weighing their options with Garrett Bowles. Is yeah. he your long term option at left tackle? No. Um, is he a valuable trade asset? Yes, he always has been. In fact, a deal almost happened with the Tennessee Titans years ago for Garrett Bowles. Uh, teams have always called on a Garrett Bowles, but you don't want to show your hand. The Broncos already have notified everyone in their mother in the NFL that they want to draft a first round quarterback. Uh, it's not going to shock anybody if they do that. So you want to try to hang on to some of this capital, some of the remaining assets of this team that you do have, right? You let a Justin Simmons go. You let a Russell Wilson some walk you see chris manhurts old tight end go lloyd cushionberry gone k k1 williams a free agent josie jewel gone uh jonathan harris they're probably not going to tender him i mean so garrett bowls is a situation we're going to have to continue to monitor and I, I i think this could be something where we see a little bit later on as the draft gets closer if not the day of maybe the broncos move up they use garrett bowls as a potential piece to go get their rookie first round qb yeah, and I I think they they're gonna wait on him, but you know it's funny I I was lucky enough to to jump on the sh uh, on Gil Whiteley's show uh, the other day, and Mark Cooper, ex offensive lineman for the Denver Broncos, is on that show all the time, and he was talking about Garrett Bowles, and it kind of made me think a little bit about his you know because he he went from holding all the time, and then all of a sudden he gets an All Pro, and everybody's like, oh, he turned the corner, he made he's like really good now. And, but they 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 changed the emphasis on the holding calls and that year and so he wasn't getting called for holding as much. So this perception of Garrett Bowles being this incredible offensive tackle who should stick around really, you know, he's 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 not. He's good. He's not great. So from my perspective, if you don't hit that quarterback in the first round, you better be taking a left tackle that you can have around for the next ten years to build with your uh, young quarterback that you're going to get somewhere along the line yeah and you look at like a david bakhtiari who's probably going to go join his buddy aaron Rodgers with the jets right yeah. so you don't really you don't answering it with another veteran player isn't the answer um it's something to kick the tires on probably but you're exactly right learn something from the russell wilson deal and that is get away from a guy a year too soon rather than a year too late or two right. years too late um that could be the lesson here especially with garrett and look he's regressing if you're just looking at it, he's regressing since he got that contract. Most players do. Uh, it's yeah. father time. He's undefeated. Gary Palmer's undefeated. Always giving us love. A generous 1999. Thank you, Gary. GLP in the house. Over to Tom's moving fund. Speaking of <laughs> houses. Yeah, I could get behind a Ryan Tannehill deal at that price. And again, I was speculating um, a Ryan Tannehill deal of what? $4.9 I think, is what the... Uh, market value adjustment is per spot rack as I pull it up. Um, and that's something I think, yeah, 4.9 million, one, one year deal. Maybe is it going to excite Broncos country? No, it's going to disgust everybody who seems to, uh, be tired of these retread quarterbacks, just like Tom and I are, but to Gary's point, to Tom's point, you've got to have some veteran knowledge in a quarterback room. That's going to be brand new with yep. the exception of Jarrett Stidham. Okay. You're going to likely have a rookie QB first round whiz. You're hoping he's going to be the guy and he's going to be carrying the clipboard, trying to learn until whoever screws up. That could be Jarrett Stidham first and then Ryan Tannehill or any which order. Sean Payton has the rookie QB card, and that's a nice card to have when you're a head coach. It's a lot to live up to, but that rookie season, you get that. You're allowed to play that. Um, Ryan Tannehill, I, I would be surprised if it happened. I think it's an interesting option. But, Gary, as I look at it, man, I mean, what? We talked about Jimmy G. We don't want him. Teddy Bridgewater's coaching high school football. Uh, Tyler Huntley, Joe Flacker's to the Colts. Uh, Brian Hoyer, Josh Dobbs. No, thank you. We saw him last year. I mean, and then it just really falls off. You know what? You're going to get Trevor Simeon back here. No, uh, I mean, Matt Barkley. No, AJ McCarron. He wants to go play in the XFL or whatever that hell that thing is. The rock is doing. Uh, so it, it just, it gets dry and it gets tough, man. Yeah. And I, I really don't know if Tannehill is going to come that cheap either, but he might, but I, I mean, 
it's a backup quarterback with experience might garner a little bit more money than four, a little over four million, especially since they give Stidham ten for two years last year. So, yeah, I mean it is drying up, but that's a good thing because you don't want a lot of these quarterbacks. I mean, you just don't want them. You don't want to pay high price for overpriced, uh, you know, quarterback. Kirk Cousins been a good statistical quarterback, but he just made a huge amount of money. You don't want to pay that kind of money. Uh, you want to go out and get your find your own. And like I said, try and bring in a vet. The veterans have all gone. I mean, other than Tannehill, really, leaders. To Rod Taylor, I thought he might be in mix. He got signed. Br Brissett got signed. So their options are dwindling. So in the end, if they don't sign somebody soon, they're probably going to be stuck with Stidham, a rookie, and maybe Danucci. I don't know. Oh, Danucci. We're talking Broncos quarterback futures. And guys, speaking of future, enter AG1. Listen, the older we get, the more seriously we know that we have to take care of our health and nutrition. Enter AG1. For people like us sitting at the laptop for hours, writing articles, doing podcasts, it can become all too convenient to rely on coffee and caffeine. But that's not great. It's not great for our body, especially our blood pressure. And there's always a crash with caffeine. With AG1, I get sustained energy, so I'm not reaching for another cup of coffee in the afternoon. On top of that, I can't stand swallowing those horse pill-sized multivitamins. I've learned recently how important it is to take care of your gut health. AG1 kills all three of those birds with one stone, and it does so in an impressive, life-altering fashion. Improved gut health, focus, energy, and nutrition all in one awesome smoothie or mixed in a refreshing and delicious cup of water. AG1 is next level. Yeah, AG1 is a supplement I trust to support my whole body health and help me feel my best. And if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs when you first subscribe. Go to drinkag1.com slash huddle. That's drinkag1.com slash huddle. Check it out. Boom. Wednesday night, it is MHI. He is Thomas Hall. I'm Luke Patterson. Get at Tom on X at Thomas Hall NFL. Yours truly at Luke Patterson LP. We are reacting to the first official day. The league year started today at 2 p.m. Mountain here in Broncos country, which means some things got finalized, Tom, including Brandon Jones, new Broncos safety, formerly a Miami Dolphin. His deal was finalized three years, twenty two point five million dollars. Defensive tackle Malcolm Reach joins his ex head coach from the New Orleans Saints and now Broncos head coach Sean Payton on a two year, seven million dollar deal. And then the trade with the Cleveland Browns that sent wide receiver Jerry Judy to Cleveland gave the Broncos a fifth and a sixth round pick. We are reacting to all of that and more. Who are the Broncos going to get as another veteran quarterback? Which rookie quarterback should the Broncos look at? Bo Nix had a pro day yesterday, got some conflicting reports. I heard Broncos scouts were there. And then on the Denver radio earlier today, I heard they weren't there. What's going on with Bo Nix. He looks like he's slipping a little bit. Um, we're talking JJ McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, anything and everything Broncos. Where's Justin Simmons going to land as reports say he's wanting a fat contract and Philly wants to no know part of it. And we're sounding off with you guys, Broncos country. Let us know how you think. The Broncos are doing a free agency, relatively quiet when you look at new guys coming aboard. But, Tom, they've also had some good re-signings, right? You look at a P.J. Locke, Will Lutz, Michael Burton, Quinn Bailey, Michael Bandy, Lil Jordan Humphrey, and Adam Troutman, the last two today. Rock Chalk Broncos coming in here, $10 super. What's up, Rock Chalk? With the scrap heap that's left available in the free agent quarterback market, the Broncos should just go with Stidham but they'll need to be aggressive in getting their guy at quarterback in the draft. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life and MHH for life. I like it, Rock Chalk. That's essentially kind of what we want, Tom and I, in a perfect world. We don't want any of these retreads. You got to have one, right? So you probably look towards the bottom of that pile that you're referencing. Um, maybe it's an A.J. McCarron. I, I don't know, but I like where Rock Chalk's head, head is at with his second point. If the Broncos want to draft a first-round quarterback, they're going to need to trade up. They will not be sitting there at 12. I, You name them, they got to go get them. I, I think that it's possible you see Bo Nix slip there. Penix is going to be, be available there. But if you want a J.J. McCarthy, you got to go up. You want a Jaden Daniels, you got to go up. If you're a Drake May fan, he may not even be within reach, but you got to try to go up. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, if they're, if they're wanting a quarterback – 
in the draft, which is, it seems like they are. I mean, the moves that they have not made indicates they are targeting a quarterback in this draft, a rookie quarterback to kind of take over, uh, be the leader of this uh, new look Denver Broncos slash Saints. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but yeah, they're going to have, you're probably right. They're probably going to have to trade up. I, the the pro- firepower that they're going to have to to use to do that means they're going to have to trade a couple players. They will. They're going to have to put together because they can't trade their entire draft. They've got too many holes to fill. They they need to trade a couple players so that that's where Garrett Bowles comes in. That's where uh, well, I'm surprised Justin Simmons wasn't you know some, Sutton. somewhat you know you got Sutton you got a few pieces but you're going to have to package up something to move up maybe four or five spots probably. And that may not even be enough. Who knows? You got to, yeah, to your point, Tom, you got to leapfrog a lot of teams. Lawrence Rivera, our guy, uh, I'm going to miss that. You know, I love stirring the tea. And Lawrence always stirring the tea here at MHI. A bit of a troublemaker, and I like it. (laughs) Especially, uh, you know, it takes one to know one. And troublemakers, Tom, I'm all about it. Let's see here. Thanks, Lawrence. Hopefully you're doing well, man. Stay safe out there in Broncos country where the weather is getting nasty. Lawrence, I know you're up in the mountains, man. Stay safe. Uh, We're supposed to get about two feet of snow in the rocks where I live. It's going to be absolutely insane. It's that old heart attack snow, right, where old men should not be shoveling and they all have heart attacks. Be careful (laughs) out there, guys. Take care of each other. And, Lawrence, we appreciate the support. Uh, speaking of the support, man, support all the way from across the pond with WJ ba- B, William James Baker, my favorite two guys on MHH, London Colin. Guys, with the way things are going, I'm literally surprised we didn't get Gardner Minshew as a safety net just in case we don't get JJ McCarthy at 12 or even a Bo Nix. Do we see the Broncos looking at quarterback and free agency or possibly trading for one? Also, Cortland Sutton and Jones, likelihood of them leaving? Get Justin Simmons back. Go Broncos. Well, a lot to unpack here. I'm going to leave this up for just a second. Thank you so much for joining us live. I know it's the wee hours across the pond over where you're at. And happy St. Paddy's if you celebrate St. Paddy's too, man. Um, Here's the thing with this. Gardner Minshew, does he scare me as a Las Vegas Raider? No. Did I want him in, as, as a Denver Bronco? No. Um, I no disrespect to Gardner Minshew, but he's a Jag, just another guy, just like a Jarrett Stidham, right? I don't know the contract numbers. Maybe Stidham got paid less. Maybe he got paid more. Doesn't matter. Not really, because neither are the future for either franchise. Uh, I could see where you're going there, because when you look down the quarterback list, Tom, that you and I absolutely despise, including uh, Jimmy Garoppolo atop that list, uh, Ryan Tannehill, 4.9 million, maybe, but it doesn't move the needle for either one of us. It's, it's interesting that, um, the Raiders sign a Gardner Minshew. Here's the thing with possibly trading for a quarterback. I've been talking about it for three to four weeks now. Uh, I've heard that Sean Payton likes Sam Howell. Um, How much does he like him? That remains to be seen. Is he picking up the phone? Is he calling Washington? I have no clue. I'm not going to lie to you and get on Twitter and say per source. I just something that I've heard um, could be smoke. Who knows? The Sam Howell moved the needle for you. Not really. And you have to give up assets to go get him. So what does that look like? It's tough, Tom. It's a tough spot. So, William, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for tuning in across the pond. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I wouldn't say that they wouldn't trade for a quarterback and they might still do that if they get a decent price on one. But what quarterback is out there that makes you think, Okay, he's going to be the one that leads this team into the the winning ways that we used to remember. None of them. And I know people are throwing around Justin Fields. He doesn't move the needle for me. No, he's been terrible. I will say he's improved each year, which was better than Sam Darnold, nice. who's gotten worse each year. Uh, but he's still not That's like the type saying- of quarterback that you're going to be like, yes, trade him, and then we're back, baby. Because he's not. He doesn't move the <laughs> needle for me. Uh, no, no, none of the quarterbacks that would come via a trade really does that. So it's basically, hey, let's go get our own and see what happens in the draft. Um, those other guys, yeah, Jones and Sutton are probably uh, could be gone. And uh, I don't think Simmons is coming back. I think he needs to go somewhere else, uh, go someplace that maybe gets him back to uh, gets him into a postseason game for the first time in his career or something. Uh, but I don't think he's coming back. We'll see. I thought winning a championship was important. I mean, like, you know, like it's easy for us to project goals on these guys, right? Like these guys that have their own lives, their own families. 
Um, should Justin Simmons try to get himself a bag? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? I mean, you're your own advocate. You have to be um, selling yourself to some of these teams. Now, I think it's interesting when you look at the safety market and just how flooded that safety market is and really just how dried up it is. I mean, um, it's funny. I think Mark Schlereth refers to it as the Fangio effect, meaning that these safeties play this shell under, underneath coverage the entire game until they get to the red zone where there's nine men in the box. And then everybody's wondering suddenly why safeties were overpaid five years ago. And now all of a sudden we've got a flux of them. The game has changed a little bit and that shell underneath coverage split and cover twos. I mean, it's it's changing the way teams are considering the safety position, especially when you can get a newer, younger one in the later rounds every year. I mean, look at what the Broncos are doing right now with the Texas special. Uh, you got P.J. Locke here. You got Brandon Jones over from the Miami Dolphins. I mean, Caden Stearns, Texas Longhorns everywhere in the Broncos <laughs> defensive backfield. Uh, David Yonk, and I'm not thrilled by that, by the way. I'm not thrilled on the PJ lock signing. Did you have to do it? Yes, but we will get into that and more. David's been waiting patiently again, man. Thank you so much for uh, all your support. If you want a veteran quarterback to help guide a rookie, uh, a lot of them say there's not a job. Ask Aaron. He has said no to fields. Uh, it's all about where guys are at in their career. David's exactly right. I mean, um, these journeyman quarterbacks seem pretty comfortable for the most part being journeyman quarterback because they can have extensive successful careers and i think of guys like mccowns right the mccown brothers come to mind um i don't know tom they're, they're a dime a dozen when you look at it but it's tough when you're trying to sell a fan base yeah and the difference is you know if you have a starter an established starter who's still trying to keep his job and they draft a rookie uh, yeah that's not my job i'm i'm still the starter i'm gonna go out there and win uh but if you're bringing somebody in for the specific purpose of hopefully being a backup to a rookie who can mentor then that's a different story. You know, then yeah. you, you pick the right player. You don't, you don't pick the egotistical one that thinks that they're still a starter and they're, you know, going on 40 and, and still terrible. So that's just it, Tom, to your point, Jarrett Stidham's not going to like throw a Twitter fit when the Broncos draft JJ McCarthy at, at six, like, right. you know, like he knows where he's at in his career. Um, and I know Jarrett Stidham, first guy in the building, last one out, but I mean, it's, it's some awareness, right? And that's that kind of awareness that we didn't get with Russell Wilson. You know, the same guy that's going to win three Super Bowls with Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll see about that. But uh, yeah, David, thank you for the support. I really, really appreciate it. But yeah, it just depends on on you know what that person is coming in to do. If they're telling him you're coming in and you're going to be the starter, then sure that they're not going to. Then he doesn't have to mentor. But I think it would be it would be one of those things where he says, uh, where the coach says you're going to come in, you're going to help this rookie grow. If you need to start, we'll start you. But that's your role. And if they don't want to sign for that, then they won't. Phil McLaughlin weighing in. Good evening, Luke, Thomas, and Scott. Um, not used to the daylight savings time change. I'm glad I caught you guys. What do you guys think about Harrison Bryant and Hunter Renfro as possible free agents? Hashtag Buck of Phil. I love it, man. Daylight savings time pisses me yeah. off so bad. I'm still grouchy about it. I'm right there with you, Phil. Thanks for joining live, man. Every every week. Really appreciate that. Hunter Renfro was a, a wide receiver that I've been thinking a little bit about, Tom. I think he's going to be cheap. I think he's reliable. Now, he has an injury history. You probably got to worry about some availability. But um, I think he's going to be a sought-after wide receiver. I think it's worth a phone call if you're the Denver Broncos. I don't know about Harrison Bryant, but Hunter Renfro in a complimentary role, a guy that could play special teams. Yeah, though we're rebuilding that wide receiver room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would take a shot at Hunter Renfro. I think he's a good route runner. And if he can stay healthy, he can be a productive, you know, uh, receiver. Not, uh, you know, not one of the big names, not a starter, not a, any, but somebody that if he, he comes at a reasonable cost, he's young, you might take a shot at him. Um, Harrison Bryant, uh, the tight end, I don't, I mean, you've already got two young tight ends that you're trying to bring up and Adkins and Kroll. I mean, and he's, Trout, got, he's got more just... experience. Don't get me wrong. He's got more experience, but I think you need to get somebody who might be a little more dynamic, you know, go out, go in the draft and look for someone, uh, a tight end who can really stretch the field or hope that Dulcich somehow stays healthy, you know, but I mean, both of them are good, are good thoughts. Uh, I think signing Adam Troutman may have taken them out of the, Harrison Bryant um, 
conversation possibly, but uh, the the wide receiver there, I, I think he's a he might be someone that you would take a shot at. Well, what about Adam Troutman, Tom? He was just re-signed today. Broncos country is gushing over that move. I mean, <laughs> you have to solidify some position rooms, and I'm being facetious about that. Adam Troutman's a nice player, but he's not a he's not a difference maker. I think he's kind of that safety blanket for a rookie quarterback, for a Jarrett Stidham, even. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have something. And in Greg Dulcich, hope is not a strategy. It's just it's yeah. so tough for me right now when you look at some different these positions and these these rooms and they're redesigning the wide receiver room. Little Jordan Humphrey comes back really pumped about that deal. More touchdowns than Jerry Judy last year. Uh, Hunter Renfro, again, way more of a productive of a career than Jerry Judy's had. See you later. First round bust. ML or MBL X test prep coming in at two dollars. Super uh, drink. May Drake mania will be running wild in the MHC, dude. Uh <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Drake May, but I like this Drake Mania. Um, man, Drake May, what's going on with the quarterbacks? Who's up? Who's down? Caleb Williams, that whole fiasco. Holy cow, Tom! It's draft season, man. We're yeah. talking rookie quarterbacks, baby. Well, Drake May, talk to me about Drake May. I would love to have him if he fell. I just, I think it's a lot of gum flapping that you're trying to get you know, posturing, trying to get somebody to drop or whatever, you know, trying to convince other teams that nobody wants him. I, to me, I think he's going to go pretty early, just like Caleb Williams and, and Daniels. So the Broncos probably don't have a shot at him, but if they do, I would love to see him come to Denver. It'd be, it would be, a, he's got a lot of potential to be a really good quarterback in the league. Boom, getting some love from the Bahamas from Royalty 242. Uh, which quarterback in the draft will be a good fit? Yeah, Drake May is a, a nice prospect. I stay away from Caleb Williams. I stay away from Penix. Um, I like J.J. McCarthy a lot right now. I've been on Jaden Daniels since the very beginning. He is my absolute number one. If you could get Jaden Daniels here to Broncos country, man, I would be through the moon. I would be very excited with a J.J. McCarthy as well. Again, Pick your guy, Broncos country. This is an exciting time right now. These debates are great because we just don't know how these quarterback prospects are going to pound out. Remember when Justin Fields was going to be a sure thing? Now we don't know what's going on with him. The Chicago Bears are kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better expression, they're, they're, they're caught. They're caught with their you-know-what down because – they went out there, they being their GM, and said, oh, yeah, I'm listening to offers for Justin Fields, and now he's playing a shell game with who exactly, pretending that they're going to keep him. It's a bizarre situation. Uh, you said it very eloquently earlier. Justin Fields does not fit Sean Payton's scheme, does not fit where the Broncos are going. Um, I hope to see him somewhere else some other day, but uh, it, it's just, I'm making, what's the point? The point is we don't know how these rookie quarterbacks are going to, are going to make it. Sean Payton said it at the combine, right? You get four or five that are drafted in the first round, maybe one or two make it. And that's the fact. Look how long it took Baker Mayfield to secure a bag. How many teams? Yeah. Four. It was his fourth team. And you know, say there's four quarterbacks drafted in the first 10 picks. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, all four of these, these guys go, one of them, based on statistical probability of the last, you know, more than a decade of drafting, only one of them is going to be that impact player that people are like, that's our elite guy. I mean, three Jayden of them will be, can be starters. Three of them can be starters, but they're not going to be the, the elite uh, quarterback that you need. So in my mind, if you draft a quarterback in the top 10, that better be a, a, a dang good quarterback, not just a starter who, you know, plays a lot, but not doesn't get you anywhere. So that, Tom, that's and now I'm not saying that all of them will be bust. I'm just saying the probability of right. three of them being a bust. So you just got to hope that you get the one that's not right when you uh, when you do because you never you never know what is going to happen with these these guys these quarterbacks. I mean, are they do they have it upstairs like a Paxton Lynch? He didn't have it. he doesn't didn't care. Mm. He didn't want to try. Are they are they hard workers? Do they have the talent and can they process well? Some of these things you just have a hard time knowing until they're in the NFL and then it's too late. He already drafted him. But when you know, you know. And I know I don't want Caleb Williams at all. I think he is immature. I think he promotes himself as a little bit of a punk. I don't like what his whole thing about his dad trying to get ownership rights with the team. I, I don't like any of it. And I think he's turning a lot of people off. Uh, he'll fit well 
in Washington or Chicago. Uh, Lawrence coming back in. I feel like a lot of teams are going to disrespect Jaden Daniels and let him slide to the second like Lamar Jackson when he's definitely a top 15. Man, I would be thrilled if that happened, Lawrence. And Lawrence has obviously been playing with the mock draft simulators because I have two, Tom. I was playing with one or two earlier today, and I, I saw this exact scenario that our guy Lawrence Rivera is saying where Jaden Daniels is, is slipped. And I guess crazier things have happened, but I think because of a Lamar Jackson, Lawrence, to your point, he won't slip young athletic quarterbacks that can be natural throwers of the football, have a natural processing ability to be able to translate from the X's and O's onto the field in real time. As things happen, as things break down, they're a rare breed. And when you think you've identified one, you can't afford not to gamble to go get them. And uh, Lamar Jackson, for that reason, I think is the reason Jaden Daniels is going to be, man, I could see him going top three. I could see him really making the case uh, of, look, my stock is going up. Everybody loves me. I don't know what's going on with Drake mania, right? <laughs> and some of that slip or whatever. But it, it's it's the season of lies, Tom. It's hard to say. Yeah, and I think had he competed at the combine, he probably would have skyrocketed. You know, if he had a good, maybe he, you know, who knows? He could have had a poor performance, but likely had a good performance. And, you know, when you don't have anybody running up in your face, uh, you know, 300 pound defensive lineman in your face uh, in real life situations, they usually throw pretty well. Uh, so I think that probably would have helped him, but he didn't do it. I think he should have, especially since Caleb Williams. Uh, decided not to. He's just kind of like going with whatever his stock is. But yeah, I mean, if he's going to fall to 12, I mean, even if he starts falling, I think the Broncos might try and trade up to get him. I mean, he seems like a pretty good uh, quarterback. And the nice thing too is, like you said, he's mobile. He can do stuff with his legs as he's learning the system. You know, he's not just a statue back there. He's dynamic. So there's, it's like that, you know, I'm not comparing him to Josh Allen by any means. Josh right. Allen had a rough go of it his first year. But he did a lot with his legs that helped, and he still does it as well. But that other element can kind of get him over the hump as he's learning to you know, become a better NFL quarterback. Why not take a shot at somebody like that? Well, it's, you not have just, to, it's not like getting somebody who can't throw the ball just run around, right? right. He can throw, he's proven he can throw the ball. Yeah, he's not an option quarterback or anything like that. Uh, and, I mean, here's the thing. If you're looking to move on from a Garrett Bowles, which you could better do a year early as opposed to a year late, uh, you know what you're getting in Mike McGlinchey and pass protection, right? I mean, you can only fix that to a certain point or scheme that to a certain point. Uh, you had damn well better at a quarterback that can turn the corner, that can maneuver. And I'm not just talking about Russell Wilson spinning backwards for three yards and taking right. a sack on the right-hand side every time. I'm talking about a quarterback that can be instinctual, a quarterback that's not playing afraid, a, a quarterback that uh, has a natural presence about him. I think Jaden Daniels has it. Then again, Tom, I've been wrong before on quarterbacks. So is everybody else. WJB coming back in. Thank you, William. Uh, all the way from London. Guys, couple of free agents available still. Fuller, cornerback. That wouldn't be a bad deal. Uh, Williams, Mike Williams from the Los Angeles Chargers. Is he worth replacing Jerry Judy? Yes. I know defense is key, and there were reports this week in London of the Broncos trading for Chase Young at edge, but concerned due to how many moves he has made. I would be open for this if this is the right price, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it's worth taking a uh, look at Williams as a wide receiver. I mean, he's had injury history, so he may not co command a lot of money, so it's, it may be worth it. But Chase Young, to me, is is one of those guys that doesn't seem to have the want to all the time. And that's, a you know, to pay him big money for somebody who – may not want to play every down, that's that's a bit concerning to me. We did it last year with lots of players on both offense and defense. Tom. <laughs> yes. We've already done that, right? And look at and I'm, I'm Zach Allen, where were you? You were my Zach Allen was my training camp MVP, Tom. You were there. We were watching training camp. He was a monster. And then he was a ghost all of 2024. Yeah, I mean, he started to come on a little bit later in the year, but the out of the gate he was he was not the guy that we thought he was going to be from training camp. And maybe he will be next year. Maybe part of it is Vance Joseph. I'm not a big Vance Joseph fan. Maybe he needs a, you know, get in a better scheme that uh, he puts him in the right spot to make plays. I don't know. But the other thing too with Zach Allen is there wasn't another dynamic pass rusher on that defense. There were decent pass rushers. You get some decent edge rushers when they were healthy, but on that interior defensive line, Mike Purcell, DJ Jones, Jonathan Harris, they didn't move the needle. So it, I mean, I think. I think if you get 
somebody who can rush the passer a little bit better and have more focus on him. I think Zach Allen may have a better year next year, uh, but that's a big if, right? You got to you got to bring them in. You got to uh, see yeah. who that is and hope that they do make that next step. Well, and real quick, Williams point, man, they wouldn't need to trade for Chase Young. He's a free agent. They could go get him right now if they yeah. wanted to. Um, so again, you know, who a guy I like, Will, maybe you should take a look at um complimentary pass rusher tom and you shouldn't have to pay him a boatload but i like tyus bowser out of baltimore a lot he's 28 years old he's a free agent i think he's a nice prospect i think that he would be a good person to push a, a baron browning or a jonathan cooper and let's figure out who's better and go with that guy for a couple seasons as we develop pass rushers as we draft them hopefully like our guy phil's saying again thank you for coming back in thank you broncos country for all the support really good show tonight we're rocking and rolling here on mhi i keep saying this but i'm not sure if it's going to happen Trade back, pick up a Daniels, Rattler, Milton, Knicks, et cetera, and build up the defensive line, the edge, and the offensive line. Um, I Yeah, I stay away from Rattler myself. I don't like Rattler at all, but uh, it's each their own, man. I mean, like there are quarterbacks I like and quarterbacks I don't like. Jaden Daniels, I don't think you're going to be able to trade back and get at Jaden Daniels, Phil. Maybe. I mean, those mock draft simulators are saying something. Anything can happen. Um, it, it's so hard to project quarterbacks. It's so hard. And I mean, there's some mocks out there saying now wide receiver. Who knows? Wide receiver entering the top four, the top five. That'd be an interesting position, especially in a quarterback heavy draft. Um, Tom, you've always kind of subscribed to logic like Phil <laughs> and logic tells you there are a lot of holes on this Broncos team and convince me you and Phil need to sell me and the rest of Broncos country that it would be okay to trade back and build up the team in the trenches. Well, I, I would say that because that's an important piece because they, like I said, they have to get younger. Their defensive line was pretty terrible last year. You need a dynamic interior pass rusher. You need someone that can help stop the run. You need an edge rusher who can get after the quarterback, help out those defensive backs. It's very important. Offensive line, you you know, like I said, you want a young offensive tackle to grow with this young quarterback that you're going to get. So you want to, you don't want an old uh, veteran that if you can get some draft picks for him, go do it. This is a rebuilding time. I like it, but at the same time, you need a quarterback. And this is the draft to do it, uh, from what I'm being told. Like next year's draft is, who knows what's going to happen, but it's not as promising as this draft. So for me, like if if he's there and you want him, go get him. Try and build your team with some later picks if you can. Uh, hopefully you get some you get some luck. But well, it's very to your tough. point. To your point and Phil's point, as I look it up on Spot Rack, they're going to have to go to the draft. You know why? Free agency at the left tackle position. The average age has to be thirty. I mean, you're looking at a David Bakhtiari at 32, DJ Humphreys from Arizona, right? Jonah Williams, I think, just signed there yep. if, uh, right before the show. Uh, Charles Leno, what, you want Tyron Smith from Dallas? I Pass. Uh, 38-year-old Dwayne Brown from the Jets? Pass. Cornelius Lucas, Donovan Smith? I mean, it gets real tough. So, Phil, you have a really good point. Tom, you've got a good point, too. I mean, I hope the Broncos are doing all of their homework, and I think that they are. Right. I, I don't know about the reports. Were they at Bo Nix's pro day yesterday? Some say yes. Others say no. Hard to say, but I would imagine Sean Payton. I would hope I pray every night to whatever it is that you believe in. I, I hope you pray too that Sean Payton is scouring the earth for the quarterback looking and turning over every rock. Uh, if it's the Tulane kid, the Cecil Lammy came on during the senior bowl, Michael Pratt and told us that the Broncos had interest in let's do that. I mean, let's wherever we need to go like a Brock birdie, let's go. And, uh, Dennis Woods, let's go. He's coming on in on MHI. Thank you. And welcome. Appreciate the support, Dennis. The Broncos need to keep Garrett Bowles to protect the rookie first round QB. I mean, that might be their strategy. They might be thinking that, you know, get some, have that experience and then see what happens after, after this year. But uh, again, I still think if you're doing a rebuild and you want to build that young nucleus of the team, an important position is offensive tackle that you want to build on, right? You want that to grow, have rookie contracts with the quarterback, your left, you know, your solid left tackle, then be able to fill in some really key free agents in two years to really make that run. Um, I, I, I would prefer them to have young up and comers that they drafted to fill in those dynamic uh, positions. 
edge rusher, an interior pass rusher. They have a cornerback in Patrick Sertan, quarterback and left tackle. Uh, that's that's what the way I see it. That's what, in my mind. If I was going to try and build a team, I would like to do it that way. Now, it, the, on the other hand, you got an experienced left tackle who can help the rookie QB keep be upright, hopefully for uh, for the first season. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so b- both have validity. I just think having them grow together makes sense when you're rebuilding a team. Well, and what are you going to do at the starting center position, right? I mean, you've got you've got your guys last year and Mike McGlinchey and Ben Powers who freed up some serious dough and got the Broncos out of some cap hell, if you will, just the last couple of days. You can read about that over at mahahuddle.com. Um, yeah, th- it's a compelling argument either way, Tom. I think you're exactly right because as you're you're breaking that down for me, I'm, I'm thinking about what you're saying. I'm thinking, you know, you're right. W- Mike McGlinchey was very – disappointing last year how much of that was on russell wilson well i can't exactly blame russell wilson for the false starts okay <laughs> like that, that's a mike mcglitchy issue uh a lot of missed assignments ma's when you go back and look at the film for a mike mcglitchy so do you want to just start all over at the left tackle position knowing the problems you have at the right tackle that's a that's a compelling argument and i really really appreciate that dennis because it's uh we, we got to hear both sides of the 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 tale so to speak so that way we could try to figure out the best move so we could try to figure out what sean payton and george payton are thinking over there because uh it's draft season man and to be a fly on the wall over at uh centura health training center man look at our guy lawrence revere i like this here's my tea take i'm we're gonna start doing this lawrence every tea take on mhi wednesday nights tea time with larry did you hear that the broncos offered sam darnold the same contract as the minnesota vikings I have a feeling it was more, and he would rather be a Viking. Here's the thing, Lawrence. This is really interesting, and and Tom and Tom can't stand Sam Darnold, and I don't really want him either. Um, the Broncos have always been connected to Sam Darnold. Tom, as you well know, they've been connected to him. John Elway liked Sam Darnold. Those reports are out there, so I'm not spilling any of my tea when I say that John Elway seriously considered drafting Sam Darnold, so much so I had heard from multiple sources, I didn't put it on Twitter back then, that he was coming to Denver. I was surprised that they didn't trade up to try to go get him when that happened. Um, I'm relieved that Sam Darnold is not a Denver Bronco. He's another one of those Jags, but when you have so many Jags and you don't have a lot of room and in to talk about your quarterback situation who am i to cast a stone at sam darnold being a broncos fan and broncos media member we don't exactly have the quarterback position figured out yeah i mean i'm glad he didn't come here if he chose the vikings that's i think that's uh a great great news for the broncos and it's the reason why i don't care for sam darnold there's nothing to do with sam darnold i don't know the guy he's probably super nice who knows it is how bad he has played now i know he was at two organizations that weren't very good, but he's played for a few coaches, uh, some of you know, Wilkes for a little while. He has gotten worse every year. And if you look at the four season, any quarterback since 1950 the play, that played the first four seasons, there's 235 of them, he was ranked 233rd, terrible, yes. and got worse. He fit right in. They overpaid in Minnesota for him. I'm sorry. Yes, it does happen on a rare occasion where a t- quarterback was terrible and then all of a sudden they get good in the right situation. I can think of a few off the top of my head, um, but I don't think he's going to do it because he got worse. Most of those quarterbacks that ha- were bad to start their career showed improvement. He he didn't even have a season adjusted for air that was better than the median of all of these quarterbacks. No. So if, if he does do something in Minnesota – it's going to be a one of those, wow, that was a huge deal. So people will try to replicate it, and they'll fail a bunch of times, and uh, that, that's where a lot of teams will be. So I'm glad he's not there. Well, it's a familiar situation, Lawrence, when you think about it. Is, is it not similar to Sean Payton and Jarrett Stidham? Very similar, right, when you start to think about it. Quarterback whisperers, I can reach this guy, me. I can. And everybody else couldn't, but I'm going to be the guy to reach him. That fits, I guess, a Kevin O'Connell move mold i mean they're they're panicking in minnesota right now lawrence right i mean kirk cousins just left and they should be celebrating kirk cousins i said it on my on my social media he's that new car that you don't need your car gets you to work just fine but the new car that may have the butt warmer yeah that's cool and all but it's you're broke now the second you drive it off the lot i don't get the sam darnold thing he's just not for me but lawrence you're right it's a compelling argument when you look at 
the Broncos always being connected to this guy. And I hope it's the last time. <laughs> uh, Mike Edel coming in here at $10 Super. Good evening, gentlemen, in Broncos country. What's up? Man, I've got a bad feeling, a very bad feeling about J.J. McCarthy. I just don't want him. I feel the sample size is so small. I don't want to mortgage our whole future. Go MHI. Mike, I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for the support and weighing in. Man, you're making me nervous because I like J.J. McCarthy. I don't love him. I love Jaden Daniels. I'm I'm crushing on J.J. McCarthy right now because, to your point, I wonder about the sample size and even more to your point. Um, I don't like Harbaugh. I never have. Right? Is it John? Jim. Jim Harbaugh. Jim. I don't like Jim Harbaugh. I never have. I, I take a shot at the guy any chance I get. I think he's an absolute weirdo. I don't think it's going to work for the Chargers. Um, so – the fact that he liked J.J. McCarthy so much, I don't know. Does that give me some caution? A little bit. Was Michigan absolutely loaded? Yeah, they had a lot of talent. They were developed extremely well, coached very well by Jim Harbaugh. Um, that's just it, man. Mortgaging the whole future on a quarterback. It's so risky. Tom tells me about it. He tries to talk me into being a responsible Broncos fan, and I sure as hell just won't do it, Mike. It's time. <laughs> I understand you don't like JJ. Let us know who you like in the chat as well, because it's fun to have these debates right now, right? Bo Nix, what's going on with the slide? Uh, Drake Mania, as our guys came in a little bit earlier, talking about him. Caleb Williams, is he turning fans off so much? You're going to see a slide there. I mean, it's interesting to have this conversation conversation tom it's a lot of fun it's exciting it's scary uh, like knees wet knees weak arms are sweaty like all that stuff man because it is time we are ready yeah and they need to take a quarterback now so the one thing about i i'm not a quarterback guru i'm not i don't have as you know i'm moving i don't have time to go watch a bunch of film on these uh prospects and everything the one thing that i do think about when you know from a broad perspective is uh, my jim harbaugh is a good coach he turned around stanford uh, he, you know, he got them competitive again. He had Michigan in the national title hunt with loaded teams that could never get over the top because they didn't have a quarterback who could do it. JJ J. McCarthy became the starting quarterback, and this year they won the uh, national title. They got over the hump. Now, does that mean that it was all JJ J. McCarthy? No, but you, as you you could see, that he couldn't get it done with the quarterbacks he had. He, he had not very good quarterbacks. So, does that mean that JJ McCarthy is going to be great in the professional, uh, you know, realm? I don't know. But it does give hope if the Broncos draft him that they got somebody who could take a team that was loaded before that couldn't couldn't win the game, uh, the big game, and and then they did it. So, and I, I think this was I I think he started last year too a little bit, but I'm, I may be just remembering it wrong. I thought this was his first full year starting, but I could be wrong. Well, and for all of Jim Harbaugh's success, nobody wants to talk about the state that he left the San Francisco 49ers in an absolute dump until they had to rebuild from the ground up and. Take no Broncos country. Maybe that's what we have to do next time you get to the Super Bowl, right? You win the whole thing. You got rebuilt. Uh, they didn't win the whole thing. Something I will always remember. And I'm critical of Harbaugh, but I'm also excited that he's in the AFC West. I'm not scared of him. I'm excited. I'm ex Let's see how good Sean Payton is. Let's see, you know, and Andy Reid. And is he going to continue this forecast of dominance? Um, I don't think things are as rosy as everybody thinks they are in Chiefs Kingdom either. So watch out for that. We're all waiting the fall. Uh, Mike, really, really appreciate you. Speaking of Mike, here's another one. Michael Ranquillo, great show tonight. Luke and Thomas on MHI and go Broncos, man. What a pearl heater coming in. Absolutely love the show. Um, man, what a, what a rocking and rolling show we have going tonight on the very first calendar league year for the NFL today started at 2 PM mountain. Some deals became official as we tie a big red bow on this. Safety Brandon Jones, Tom, came over from the Miami Dolphins, a three-year deal. Uh, Malcolm Roach came over from the New Orleans Saints, is reunited with Sean Payton, defensive tackle, a two-year gig. And then some restructures became official. Wide receiver Tim Patrick on that one year. Again, he's coming on back-to-back -back ACL Achilles injuries. Uh, Mike McGlinchey and Ben Powers, the offensive line power duo, free agents from just a season ago, restructured their deal and a cap clearance move same with zach allen uh, another one of those free agent darlings from just a year ago the trade with wide receiver jerry judy to the cleveland browns for a fifth and sixth round pick dumping 13 mil 
officially came through the wire today. And then you have some re-signings. When you look at a PJ Locke on a two-year deal, Will Lutz. What'd you make of the Will Lutz just on the way out real quick? And the in the 12th hour, Sean Payton yeah. comes in and says, Jacksonville, you're not going to get a kicker for a second year in the row from the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Will Lutz, Lutz is coming back. Well, I'm glad they did it. We don't have to. We don't have to worry about a kicker competition in training camp. I mean, Will Lutz was was a pretty solid kicker, so yeah. I think it was a good deal, and good it was nice that they were able to get him back into the fold, so to speak, even though he was about ready to leave. And and maybe that really, maybe they upped the deal a little bit that they were trying to give him when they found that uh, you know that tampering was legal, tampering was happening, and what he was going to get in the open market, so they didn't want to lose him. But I'm happy with it. I'm yeah. actually happy with the, their signings so far. I. They're not amazing, but they're not they're not bad. Like I, I the safety coming in at a reasonable price Brandon was, Jones. was you know mm -hmm. pretty was pretty good safety. He's not you know he, he's not a, a great safety. He's going to change the game, but it was a decent signing. They need to they need to make those lower price signings and you know and the run stuffer that they got that's what they needed. They needed someone not to stop the run, which they couldn't do. Yeah, and they need to continue to address this. Again, some more re-signings. Michael Burton, the fullback, comes back in a one-year deal. Quinn Bailey, uh, everyone's favorite, a <laughs> one-year deal, vet minimum. Uh, Michael Bandy, Tom and I saw him out at training camp. Again, he had a re-signed exclusive rights free agent deal. And then the news of the day, you can read about it at milehighhuddle.com. Wide receiver Lil Jordan Humphrey came back today on a one-year deal. I'm super pumped about that. He was a productive uh, receiver in a very deep room at times. Didn't get a lot of light last year but when he did he tend to shine and uh tight end adam troutman re-signed a two-year deal today again to some departures as we tie this up russell wilson he was released signed a one-year deal with the steelers justin simmons is still floating out around there we all thought he would go to the eagles not so fast maybe justin's acts asking for an expensive deal uh chris manhurts former broncos tight end was released he's on the open market Starting former starting center Lloyd Cushenberry the third signed a four year deal with the Tennessee Titans. Keep an eye on the Tennessee Titans as a potential landing spot for Justin Simmons as well. Kwan Williams cornerback is a free agent. Josie Jewell linebacker took his services over to the Carolina Panthers where he is reunited with Ezro Evero and Jonathan Harris. We're wondering what the Broncos are going to do with that defensive lineman. They're not tendering him. Yeah. Now I I actually all of these. P, uh, players that have left, I'm not sad to see Lee. But Cushionberry, he was coming on. I, it's too bad that they he finally put it together last year, and then he doesn't get to continue to do that. But I'm not, you know, there none of them moved the needle. None of them leaving really moved the needle for the Broncos, and, and frankly, none of them that they're signing really moved the needle that much. So they're, you know, they're being wise, and I think they're making the right choices right now. I don't think you go out and spend a bunch of money. I think you try and roll it over, like I said early, uh, try and roll over as much as you can. But who knows? Maybe they're maybe they're going to try and get you know surprise everybody. There are a few people out there, a few players out there that that can help the team. Um, but again, the draft do th use the draft to try and get some of these young up and coming players who are going to be your core nucleus of your team, your core players in three years when the Broncos are really should be starting to make that kind of turnaround and that run. Cause I, I don't think it's next year and I don't, I may, maybe the year after, but it's going to be tough sledding for a couple of years. Boom. Free agency just started today. The day is not even over. Stay tuned on milehighhuddle.com for the Broncos news and analysis that's going to be coming from free agency, including rumors all the way up until the NFL draft, where we will have live coverage. Follow Tom at Thomas Hall NFL over on X. Yours truly at Luke Patterson LP. We'd appreciate a review wherever you listen to your podcast and please follow at MHI underscore pod. Uh, Broncos country into free agency. Here we go. This is the way. This is the way.